Good morning, everybody. We are going to review average angular velocity. And the symbol for average angular velocity is omega sub AVG. And a young SI unit is radians per second. Here are some definitions of what average angular velocity is. It is how fast an object changes its angular position. And it is the ratio of the angular displacement of the body to a time interval. So before I proceed class, I apologize if I sound sick. Whenever the weather is cold, that is my curse, I become sick. But I'm good. I'm okay. Okay, and our formula is delta theta over delta time. Allow me to discuss a little bit more about this formula. So when it comes to average angular velocity, we're talking about a rate of change rate of change in angular position with respect to time. So really, um, when I ask for the average angular velocity, I'm interested in knowing how fast that object changed position. So since it's a rate of change, there has to be some change involved. So unsa man ang change na naka-involve ani? Well, so, ang change nga na-involve ani is ang change sa position. So, kung ang angular position sa object is somewhere right here initially, mo na yung angular position, na ano corresponding initial time, initial instant of time, and um, we try to figure out ng change ba na siya after some time, t final. Now, let's say, for example, ni change jid siya. Na ano siya sa more positive angular position, the um, theta f, corresponding to tf. Now we know na nasa change. So, nasa theta final minus theta initial, ay yung change in angular position. But, when we talk about average angular velocity, we're not only interested in the change in angular position, we're also interested in how fast niya na-achieve ng change in position. In a blink of an eye ba, na siya sa theta f, gikan sa theta i, or did it, it, was it a gradual change, or a very fast change? So, important yun ang denominator nga delta t. Um, delta theta over delta t. This is just the slope pod, no? Rise over run. Here's an example. After careful measurement, data gathering, and theoretical analysis, a rotating door's angular position is found to be a function of time given by Theta is equal to 3t squared minus 5t, where t is in seconds and theta in radians. What is the average angular velocity of the rotating door from t equals 0 to t equals 5? So we're asked to find the omega avg of this door. Is this door rotating? Yes. How do we know? Well, it just says that the door is rotating. And what's up with this formula right here? It seems pretty random, diba? Right? But, you know... Um, it helps to read this after careful measurement, data gathering, and theoretical analysis. So, ang story day ani is there's this scientist na very dasig ka siya, wala siya y trabaho, no lots of time in his hands. So, na siya gi analyze ng rotating door. So, careful measurements, so nagkwa siya protector, nagkwa siya uh, stopwatch, and he observed the door measured um, the angular position of the door f as a function of time. So, siguro at t equals 0 seconds, kay nakita niya ang door kay nasa 0 radians or the positive x-axis. After 1 second, nakita niya ang door kay nasa 2 radians. After 2 seconds, negative 2 radians, and so on and so forth. More data yang gi obtain. And then he went home, then gi tanaw niyang data, gi analyze niyang data. And ano siya, Eureka! I discovered a formula that can describe all of this data and predict for future data. Kita niya nga, uh, the theta actually follows a pattern. 3t squared minus 5t. What an amazing door. And I just derived this formula and whenever you derive formula in this manner, na you get 
data and you analyze the data and you try to find patterns in the data, you get a formula that is known as an empirical formula. It is a formula that is derived from data that you got from experiments. So, mo na siyang meaning anang uh, some random equation. So, let's get the average angular velocity from t equals 0 to t equals 5 seconds. So, t equals 0 is actually our initial time and our 5 seconds is our final time. So, okay na itong denominator, delta t. Our numerator na lang, delta theta. What is our theta final and our theta initial? Hmm. Well, it's a good thing that na we obtain the data of empirical formula, dili? or na na scientist na gatag sa ato aning uh, empirical formula for this particular problem. So just remember that um, T i theta i is related to T i, and theta f is actually a function of T f. T i is a function of Theta i is a function of t i and t f. Theta f is a function of t f. So, if you want to get theta i, you just substitute t i into this empirical formula, which happens to be 0 seconds. And if you want to get theta f, just substitute 5 seconds into this formula. And you'll get theta f. And that's exactly what we did here in the next step. Theta 0 is equal to 3 times 0 squared minus 5 times 0. So we obtain our theta initial to be 0 radians and our theta final to be 50 radians. And it's just a matter of substituting it. And we arrive at our final answer for the average angular velocity to be 10 radians per second. I was curious kung sa itsura ng 3t squared minus 5t, so I used the equation grapher online, and looks like a parabola. So don't mind the left side of the y-axis because they represent values of omega for negative times, and in at least in classical physics, there's no such thing as a negative time. Okay, how about instantaneous angular velocity? Now, the symbol for instantaneous angular velocity is omega, where SI unit is radians per second. And when we talk about angular velocity, we're really referring to instantaneous angular velocity. And here's one definition. It's how fast an object's angular position is changing at an instant of time. So, mutubag na siya sa pangota na nga. Unsa ka paspas mutuyok ang isa ka object at an instant of time, like sa two-second mark. Pilayang kapaspasun. The three second mark. Pilayang kapaspasun. So we're looking at this very specific instance of time. And not a long time interval, which is what we do for average angular velocity. When we talk about instant of times, we're really referring to the limit as uh, delta theta over delta t as delta t approaches zero. And this is actually equivalent to getting the derivative of a function of theta with respect to time. Now, maybe I will share a PowerPoint presentation about the basics of derivatives. But um, when we're getting instants of time, we're getting this is just like the slope d theta over dt. It's still like a slope, diba? Right? But it's a very it's a slope that, repre um, that represents very small time intervals. It means na triangle atong ibutang kay D na lang because it represents very small intervals of time and D theta represents very small intervals of um, theta, angular position. So it's not really, for example, um, we're looking at the time at for time t equals 3 seconds, we're looking at yang instantaneous angular velocity here. And so we cannot say uh, we, need, we need to find the slope there. We need to find the rate of change there. But Barag, I explained this in my previous videos. We, you can't have just one um, point and make a line. You need two points. But 
what we do with calculus is we make these two points very close to each other. So, nagya po siya time interval, but it's a very, very small time interval, and to a certain approximation, buratag, we're still, it's like we're still referring to that specific inside of time. Although, nagya time interval, but very, very small time interval, corresponding to very, very small change in angular position. Anyway, enough chatter. Let's solve a problem. A rotating object's angular position is found to be a function of time given by theta t equals 2t squared minus 3t plus 4, where t is in seconds and theta in radians. What is the angular velocity of the rotating door? So we're getting omega instantaneous angular velocity at t equals 3 seconds. And fortunately, some scientists already provided us with... Um, I don't know, this is probably a parabola which starts with uh, So, what this graph tells us is the angular position for each time. So, for 3 seconds, um, the graph will tell us where the object is, where in radians the object is, but it doesn't tell us the velocity. We just, it just tells us where the object is, this formula. So how do we solve the velocity? Well, um, we just need to get the rate of change here. And that rate of change at that instant is just the d theta dt. And as I mentioned in the previous slide, that's our angular velocity. So, pang itaw na nato ang rate of change dili, we're getting small time intervals, very, very small time interval at that point to get the instant, ang instantaneous angular velocity at that point, which means yung yeah, derived nato ni siya. And um, you have to be familiar with the rules of derivation. So, atong i derive ang theta, is derive that with respect to t. And we can only do that if theta is a function of t, which, in this case, function is just a t. No? There is a rule in derivatives nga if a variable is multiplied by a constant, you just keep that constant. There is a power rule that if that variable is, multi is raised to a certain power, you put that value, in this case 2, beside the variable. And that the original power is reduced to 1. And let's proceed. Kanina put. So again, the constant multiple rule. This variable is multiplied by a constant. So we keep the constant. And actually, t here is really t to the 1. So what we do with 1 is, since it's uh, we follow the power rule, we place this power to the coefficient beside 1. Copy the variable and 1 minus 1, because you subtract my joke, 1, 0. And there is a rule that whenever we get the derivative of a constant, that's equal to 0. So the slope of a constant is 0. It's just a horizontal line. 2 times 2 is 4. t to the 1 is t. And 3 times 1 times t to the 0, which is also 1, is negative 3. So this is our omega as a function of time. And this tells us, it's actually a linear graph, no? Omega as a function of time. I think it starts at negative 3. It goes up. But this graph tells us what omega is at certain times. So at 3 seconds, at when we substitute on 3, did it? we get 4 times 3. And actually, I'm going to put the PowerPoint. Okay. 9 radians per second. So, what is the answer?